Welcome back. In the first video, we looked at how you could use Rhino Inside to define grids inside Revit, which could then be used to update linked Revit geometry. Now that we have a more complex building outline, I'd like to use this curve and grasshopper to guide and define the Revit elements such as floors and framing. I don't particularly need Revit open while I generate this script. So I'm going to prepare this outside of Revit then I'll show you how I can open the same script inside Revit to complete the Revit bake. I'm also going to create this in a separate script in order to keep the size of the script smaller and less cluttered. Firstly, I'm going to take the boundary edge curve we previously referenced from Rhino and we'll offset that twice. Negative 200 will define the inner slab edge and negative 300 will define the inner points in which the perimeter framing will be attached to. The facade of the building is going to be completely vertical. So I'll intersect the geometry at the base plane and project it up rather than doing the intersects at each level. Within the Geometry Gym Boolean plugin, we have a number of components which can help with these types of geometry intersections. Assuming I want my primary framing on the grid lines, I can use the curve split intersect component to split these lines at each of the intersections between each other line. I can also provide an additional curve to use as a splitting curve only. I'll put the offset curve in here. The output I get here is a series of split curves. I can then remove the two last curves to get all inbound curves from the outer edge. To get a series of outer perimeter beam curves, I can again join all the internal curves, then retrieve and merge the endpoints of those curves. Then I need to sort them by the direction of the original curve, and then finally generate and explode a polyline. I can also create my column line geometry in a similar manner by intersecting grid line curves to find points at which I want columns to be located. I can then move all of these points to each level and generate polylines connecting these points. You can then flip the tree matrix to now get a separate branch list of elements to be defined at each level of the building. From here, it is a matter of defining column and beam framing types. These will be typical catalog items which can be retrieved from the catalog profile component. First create the Revit column types, assign it a Revit material and then create the instance of these columns and provide a mark if you like. To define the slab, generate a material layer with the thickness of your slab and define a floor type with this material layer. You can then provide the offsetted curve which defines your floor outlines. At each level. Framing is assigned similar to columns using the Revit framing component. However, in this instance, I'm wanting to make sure I offset these framing members down by the thickness of the slab. I can do this by adding two number parameter inputs to the framing component called start level offset and end level offset. These parameters are inbuilt into Revit, so it will not create a new parameter on import but will simply overwrite the default values. The last thing I'll do here is to set the host of the column, flooring and framing objects to the particular levels I want them to be associated with. I can do this by using the set host component in the base geometry gym Revit tab. Great, so now I have completed this and I can preview the geometry in Rhino to make sure everything is looking as it should be. And it looks okay. Now I can open Revit and again open Rhino inside. I'll just open the Rhino file I've been using for reference geometry as well as the script I just created outside of Revit.
I can now again hit the bake to Revit component to bake the geometry to Revit. I can also make tweaks if I need to if the script, in the script if required. A problem that is often encountered when updating models is that tags will be removed or the mark will lose its association with the element when geometry is re-imported or updated. However, the geometry gym plugins allow for updating of these tags in both instances. If I go to a plan view now, I can see the associated framing geometry at that level. I will just quickly tag a couple of these elements by their member size and show how these can be updated once geometry is updated again in Rhino. So once I tag these members, I can see their member size on the plan view. If I go back to Grasshopper, I will do some minor updates to the geometry and also choose a different member size for these primary framing elements. If I then rebake these to Revit, I can see that the marks automatically update along with the geometry. I hope you have enjoyed this, these quick introduction videos to some of the Rhino Inside functionality, as well as some of the typical Rhino to Revit workflows available using the geometry and plugins for Rhino and Revit. You can get all the files for these tutorials on our technical website at technical.geometrygym.com under the learn section. There is a link in the description of this video. If there is something in particular that you would like a demonstration of, please let us know and we can add it to this list of videos. Likewise, if there are any suggestions or improvements you would like to see within the tools, you can send suggestions and support queries to support at geometrygym.com.